Today's episode is brought to you by Sprite. Nothing beats the crisp, clean flavor of a good Sprite. Mm. Mm. The fuck is this? Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I am your host Nathan Lyle and this is WNBA Weekly, the show where I recap everything that's happened over the past few days and talk about what might happen over the next few days. And you'll notice I'm back on my couch instead of standing up. I'm fighting through an infection right now. In case you couldn't tell, my face is a little swollen on this side. I almost didn't record this video, but... Uh, I decided to go ahead and do it just because the description box in the YouTube space, it doesn't allow me to just fully express every idea that I have because it's like, oh, you can only have this many characters and it's too long, blah, 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 blah. So, here I am to record this thing. So on Tuesday, the Fever only had six points the entire second quarter. But after the first half where they had 20 total points, they had 21 in the third quarter alone. But behind a huge double-double from Sylvia Fowles, who led the team with 21 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 blocks, the Sky, they finally snapped their losing streak. However, I can't really give the Sky credit because it was more of a loss for the Fever. They had 18 turnovers in the game, and when you have more turnovers than assists, it's usually a good formula for losing, especially when they were unforced turnovers. It was just a lot of really bad decision making. Not to mention that also the Sky, they were 6 of 17 from the free throws. They didn't miss their fourth, first free throw until the fourth quarter, and that was the only miss. The Fever, though, they were 9 of 20. I, I can't remember the last time a team was less than 50% from the free throw line. Then, Glory Johnson has a double-double, and Diggins has a career-high 34 points. Odyssey Sims has a career high 39 points, but the Stars, they had four players in double figures, led by 26 from the rookie McBride. d Rob she also added 21 points and seven assists, including the go-ahead bucket with three and a half seconds left in the game to give the Stars a two-point lead, and they finally snapped their losing streak. Then, McCartry, Hayes, and Little all scored more than 20 points in the game, Little leading the way with 26 points, 12 rebounds, and 3 blocks. But Brunson, she played her first game of the season and grabbed a double-double, 17 points, 12 rebounds. Lindsey Whalen also added 26 points and 9 assists. But Maya Moore was the story of the night, with a career-high 48 points, uh, second at all-time in league history. And she also grabs 10 rebounds as well. The Lynx win their 5th straight as this game goes into double overtime. In the Storm, they had 4 players in double figures led by 22 points and 9 rebounds from Langhorn. But the Mercury, they had 4 starters in double figures as well led by 22 points from Tarasi. They easily win their 13th straight game, which is the 3rd longest winning streak in league history. And they clinch a playoff berth. Then on Wednesday, the Sun had three players in double figures, led by 18 points and 10 rebounds from Cheney. Bentley was one assist short of a double-double. And the Mystics, they had five players in double figures, led by 23 from Lada, as they broke away in the fourth quarter to win their second straight game. And then Candace Parker, she sat out the game with a sore knee, and in her absence, NECA led the charge with 23 points. But Tina Charles had a huge game with 31 points, 15 rebounds, as New York slides into fourth place with a win. Then on Thursday, Sue Bird sat out the game with a strained neck, but the Storm still played well. Seattle had four players in double figures, led by 22 from Little and a triple-double from Johnson, who had but 20 points from Pondexter and a double-double from Charles. The Liberty, they grab a win in overtime, and Seattle, they've lost their fourth straight, which gives Minnesota a playoff berth. And then Candace Parker returned from a and nearly had a double-double, but Necker still led the way with 23 points. And she seems to have a green, the green light from a new coach. LA's big three combines for 53 of the team's 73 total points and 25 of the team's total rebounds. But the Mercury were firing on all cylinders and were in complete control of the game from the opening tip. All five of their starters went into double figures led by 22 from Bonner. And the, and the Phoenix Mercury have now won 14 straight games. They are the first team to 20 wins this season, and after all of that excitement, here are the current standings. Now, in case you hadn't heard already, some big news has been going on around the league. First, the Sparks fired their head coach, Carol Ross. 
and you know she's had she's done great her first couple of years there this season is incredibly disappointing she just signed an extension in December but the new ownership group took over in February so that kind of opened up the floodgates a little so but anyways she's out the door and then G the general manager and executive pre vice president Penny Toller will take over for the rest of the season and for those who don't know who she is she played from 97 to 99 and the year after retiring she joined the Sparks front office and she's been there ever since but she's never been a, a head coach and so far things haven't gotten any better yet they're still 0-2 though to be fair they're playing New York you know Tina Charles former MVP uh, Bill Lambert, championship head coach, Cappy Pondexter, she's got some rings as well. They're, they're a better team than their record indicates. And then the Mercury, well, they just on a whole nother level this season, so you can't really blame them for that. I still very strongly believe that the Sparks are going into the playoffs. As usual, they're not going to do anything once they get to the playoffs, but they're going to the playoffs. Also, Michael Cooper was diagnosed with early stage tongue cancer. He's going to have surgery and is only expected to miss a few weeks. Assistant coach Colleen Thompson will fill in during his absence. And Becky Hammond has announced that she will retire at the end of the season. I cannot say that I'm shocked by it. She's been around a long time, came into the league in the 99 season. And, you know, she's had a great career, second all-time in three-point shots made. In fact, she's, one of the, she's the main reason I started paying attention to the WNBA. Did I ever tell y'all that story? How I pick up a newspaper one day and I see Becky Hammond is coming to the Silver Stars. And the first thing in my head was like, wow, we actually have a chance to win a championship now. The second thought in my head was, wait, San Antonio has a WNBA team? Since when? Before I ever watched the, a WNBA game, I knew two names, Lisa Leslie and Becky Hammond. And as soon as I started paying attention, I found out who Candace Parker was, because she was one of those names that everyone was buzzing about. 2008, she would come in to win the MVP, uh, Rookie of the Year and MVP on the same season. Anyways, what I'm saying, Becky is, is one of those names that transcends the sport. Uh, she's, she, it's been great to watch her play. I've enjoyed it. I've said some bad things about her before. I'm not gonna lie, but still, I'm a huge fan of hers. And while it's not necessarily shocking or disappointing that she's deciding to hang it up, it still leaves a sad place in my heart space. So a few games to look forward to this week. On Friday, you're gonna have Tulsa at Washington. That one's gonna be on NBA TV at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the last time that they met, the Shock managed to dominate but that was in Tulsa, and they continue struggling on the road. Then you've got Chicago at Atlantis at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Chicago, they finally got a win, but it was against a team that just played incredibly sloppy, and even though Atlanta has dropped two straight, they're still a strong team that should be more than capable of handling their business. Then you've got San Antonio at Minnesota at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Brunson, she returned, and more is she's beasting right now. I just have no reason to ever root against the Lynx. Unless they're playing the Mercury, in which case, it, uh, I'd still have trouble picking against them. Then you've got... Then on Saturday, you've got Los Angeles at Seattle. That one's going to be on NBA TV at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And both of these teams are on losing streaks, but they both still have the potential to be in the playoffs. I'm just going to put my cards on the table and say that if LA wins this game, then the Eastern Conference playoffs will basically be set in stone. If LA loses this game, then that means, wow, they're really in trouble now. Uh, the, the gates are wide open. Tulsa and Seattle still have a chance to climb in. But if LA can just grab a few more wins and just gain control, just get to 500, they'll be in great shape. And I feel like this is pretty much just over, shut it down, Western Conference is set. Truth is, personally, I don't really care who gets the third and fourth seed because we all know it's either going to be Minnesota or Phoenix representing the Western Conference in the finals this year. We know that. Let's just go ahead, skip ahead to that. Let's just let those two play it out. Then you've got Indiana at San Antonio at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the Stars, they were able to squeak by with the win the last time they met, but after the horrible performance Indiana put on in that last game, I have trouble believing they won't come out focused. 
I expect them to bounce back. Then you got New York at Phoenix at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Both of them are on winning streaks, but one of those winning streaks is, shall we say, slightly longer. Then on Sunday, you've got Minnesota at Connecticut at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And honestly, I don't care who you play. Right now, Minnesota is the best team in the league. Unless they're playing Phoenix, in which case I'd still have trouble picking against that. Then you have Atlanta at Washington at M, and this game is going to be on NBA TV at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if they win this game, Atlanta will be sweeping the season series. And then you've got Chicago at Tulsa at 4:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And despite the fact that they're competing for the top pick in the 2015 draft, this still has the potential to be an interesting game. And then last but not least, you actually have a game on Monday. I know, it's rare. Uh, it's La Indiana at Los Angeles at NBA, on NBA TV at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the Sparks, they beat the Fever in Indiana, but the Fever have a better record on the road, while the Sparks have the worst home record in the league. I know, shocking, right? Well, that's it for this edition of WNBA Weekly. I'm your host, Nathan Nall. This has been The Fan Perspective. I'm going to eat some applesauce while I'm editing this, and then as soon as it finishes uploading, I'm taking a nap.